Cytachain, the world's most innovative crypto ecosystem. Cytachain simplifies DeFi for mainstream users and seamlessly integrates crypto into everyday life. Discover the endless possibilities with Cytachain's Layer 0 blockchain. Go and check them out, Cytachain.com. From meme to utility, Floki has it all. NFT metaverse game called Valhalla. Floki University, DeFi, charity, and shopping. Floki is governed by the people, for the people. Floki, together, there is no stopping us. Good afternoon, everyone. BC Richfield here, coming to you live from London. It's just gone one minute past midday, which makes it one minute past 1100 UTC. Big shout out to everybody joining the stream live today and obviously everybody that's watching this on Catch Up as well. Special mention for Moral this morning, who was first in slightly beating Erica, Stevie Boy, and slightly behind Craig here as well, which is brilliant. See Geo. Suleiman K, great to have you with us again, mate. And all the other hundreds of people that are flooding into the room, really, really appreciate you all kind of tuning in. Um, obviously, look, just to kind of outlay it uh, as we go in, whack, knit, hello, mate. Hey, Bern, how you doing? Just to lay it out at first, this isn't, there's nothing going to be political about this show, right? So obviously we've had some geopolitical events that have taken place. I don't take sides in this situation, nor do I really consider myself, um, you know, uh, with enough hands-on experience in this space to kind of comment on that. All I would say is that I'm very, very sorry for anybody that's kind of caught up in it. And I, I wish everybody well, would be a wonderful world if there was a little bit more peace and love. Um, but not to get caught on too much of a hippie vibe, these things happen, they affect the market. So... It's our job as analysts to review this. And unfortunately, war, geopolitical tensions, bits and pieces like that do come into our lives on a daily basis. Um, I don't and I'm not going to share an opinion or take sides on either of it. For me, it is just very much about making sure that we cover what we want to do. Whatever's going on in the world, what we need to understand is that we all have the ability to change our own destinies. And hopefully, you know, if trading is that kind of thing that appeals to you, then that's something that, you know, you can better yourself in with time. Um, Telvin Fu, hello, my friend, and very much welcome. Yeah, it was a scary dip. One of the things I wanted to share with you guys is getting into the, the psychology, I would imagine, of most professional traders. I can't speak for everybody. I can speak for myself. And I'm very, very lucky to work alongside an exceptionally good team and also have some of the very best people in the space. I'm lucky enough to call them friends or mentors. Um, but I just wanted to kind of cover this off today and look and just kind of talk about how these kind of news driven events, these fundamental driven events can really, really kind of affect the markets, but how we can always kind of look to our technical levels for this right now. I know a lot of people will say technical analysis will never tell you if there's a massive dump in coming and it won't highlight a black swan event. No, it won't. Um, but I can tell you this right now, there's things that we can learn from the technical side of things as we move into these. So... I wanted to just share a couple of bits with you, right? Because one of the things I share this um, on Twitter, right? So uh, on a Sunday night, I write the Bitcoin report for the bird nest. And I always share at least one of my time frames with, with you guys on Twitter. Okay. So if you're not aware of that, you can get that. Um, you can sign up for our, uh, you can get our reports for free. You can sign up for the bird nest for free. You can take trial memberships. Anything like that is available in the description that you can look at. It's not about selling you services, guys. It's about kind of introducing you to, yes, we have paid services, but there is really, really, there's a lot of free uh, information that we put out in the space. And for this, we've been preparing um, for a while. So I wanted to kind of share this with the thought that you can really always broaden your horizons. You don't have to pay for these things. I paid a lot for my education, will continue to do so because I believe in investing in myself like that. Other people don't necessarily have the chance. So getting free information like this can really, really help. Now, of all the analysts that are at The Nest, we've got some fantastic people. They all contribute to these reports. So make sure that you know, you're know you making the most of the free information that you've got in the space. Now, I'm not going to bore you with everything that I went through on this, but basically just looking at our technicals and the example that I've got here up on the chart, the key thing that you'll notice here is this 50% Fibonacci range, okay, taking from this high to this low. Now, we've obviously seen a big dump here, which is fine. We know this was news driven. I'm going to take you back to what this little dotted red line is in a moment and how we're still looking for our technicals to hold up here. So the reason that we were long bias 
um, from yesterday is because the fact we just purged such a key level here, price very, very rarely goes in a straight line, right? So even if we are bearish, which we have to be at the moment because of market structure, my explanation was that we should really be looking to target longs up into this fair value gap and then wait to see what the reaction is here. If we manage to close above this, this is on a four hour scale, then we have other inefficiencies higher up that price might look to test. Or, you know, there could be news that we're either not aware of or developments that mean that the market is looking to recover. You will also see um, conditions like this in manipulations, right? Now, I think people, you know, make what you will of a market manipulation. News can lead to market manipulations. Uh, Elon, for example, back in the last bull run, you know, when he was backing Doge and, you know, making lots of tweets about Bitcoin, those type of news events can affect markets as well. But one thing that I do know and that the markets have taught me a very, very hard lesson for over the years is it's very, very dangerous to to be selling on aggressive dumps um, as it is to be buying on aggressive rips. Um, to give an example here, you have this big up movement here. Is it really the best place to be getting involved in the market here? You know, it depends what you're looking to do. If you're looking to get involved in a day trade here, right, and you've got clear clear liquidity targets, for example, if you wanted to be a buyer in here, you know, and then you've got targets up here, if you wanted to be a buyer here, when we dipped into this gap and you've got sale targets for up here. However, as you can see, even when we dip into this gap here, we didn't really get to the next liquidity target right away. What we ended up doing was kind of coming down, wiping out over leveraged positions here before making you know, the ultimate move back to the upside. So with where we are at the moment, it doesn't mean that I think the market's going to get back into a real kind of bullish form here, but it does mean that I can look at this on an intraday basis and target this area down here for long setups. Now, if I just zoom out a little bit and we look at a daily, we can see that this level here, this dotted line that we saw on the four hour comes from this daily level. So I'm just going to draw this back here a little bit. Right. So it's this swing low here, which is also represented as a weekly swing low, right, which is this swing low here. So let me just show you just as we dive down through the time frames. Now, the higher the time frame, yeah, then for me, the more importance that I put on that level. Thank you, Telvin. That's very, very kind of you. Um, we'll get on to your question in a minute um, in terms of the best time to buy. Um, sure, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at that and also what risk measures we want to be putting in place to make sure that we're not too overly exposed. So we can see here that we've got this daily level. Now, when price typically reacts with a high or a low, right, what we're doing is we expect some kind of reaction here. Now, we also want to monitor, so we had this here, for example, yeah, when price came into this here, we had this high. Now, when price comes down and takes external liquidity, okay, which is in the form of a high or a low, then there's an expectation that price kind of retraces back to an inefficiency. So what does that look like? If we're looking at this here on the daily basis, it means that when we take some form of external liquidity, yeah, so like, for example, this recent one here, we swept to higher. What we're then looking for is for price to retrace to find support at a specific level before continuation or before invalidating that support and then looking for lower prices. So where did the insight come from that we could be looking at a slightly deeper correction here? Well, first of all, it was this, right? It was the fact that we swept a key higher, yeah, a higher time frame higher. So this is a weekly level as well. So naturally, we expect some kind of reaction here. Now, the way that I certainly look at the markets is you often see these 50% retracements, right? Meaning that we set this low here, price pumped up to here. So if we've swept this high, we want to be aware of what's happening from this high here, okay? Now, let me just draw this as kind of a premium discount range so you guys can kind of get a little bit of a better kind of understanding of it. So when we're up here, we've swept liquidity. So we want to know what happened in the leg that led to that sweep. So this is the low that led to the sweep of the high. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm then breaking that down just into a Fibonacci into 50-50. Yeah. Hey, Peter, how you doing, mate? How many channels do you have? Um, so for me, I've got BC Richfield and then broadcasting from the Bird Nest channel, which is the trading group that I have uh, very fortunate to be a part of. Um, <clears throat> if you're getting DM'd by anyone or anything by that, by the way, guys, please do be careful. I won't reach out to you directly, no, nor will anybody from the team. We have the newsletter, we have our promotional material, which is all labelled on Twitter. Please do be careful of scammers, especially at the moment. Horrible, horrible, degenerate creatures that thrive on misfortune like what's happening in the world at the moment so just always remember to remain extra safe and vigilant okay so looking at this as our 50 50 split you see this line where it changes from red to green 
my premise is this, right? I'm looking for price to sweep liquidity here and then correct down to a fair value gap, right? Or towards a order block that's in, in this case, the lower 50% of this, right? So there were two kind of areas that I was looking at here. We had a small FVG, which was here. Okay, I'm going to draw that out a little bit more and then just make that really dark so it stands out. So quite simply, when price reacted here, I want to see something come down to the 50%, ideally down into here. So when we had price draw down into here and respect this fair value gap here, yeah, then my assumption was that because price is, look, we've got the high, higher low, higher high. I just want to see this retracement into here for us to find support and then move higher. Now, when we fail that, which we did here when we closed below this fair value gap. Those of you that watch any of my stuff on the channel will know I'm a keen advocate of inversion fair value gaps, meaning that if this area should add support, when we close below it here, we do two really key things. We invert this FVG, meaning that we expect price to now seek liquidity lower. Think of the gaps as areas that if we're bullish, we should have lots of buyers in here, right? So if we're bullish, we want to look at these gaps as being an area that has lots of buying power. So when price dips in here, we look for long setups. When they're violated, meaning that they're closed through, is when they are a sign of weakness. We then expect that to flip from support, in this case, to resistance. Now, when it does that, we're then tracking where the next liquidity is. Liquidity for me is resting below old lows or above old highs or within fair value gaps. So as I look down here, I've got no gaps. I've got a really, really clean low. So my expectation on the close of this candle, which was Friday, was that the weekend would purge lower purely to take out liquidity targets. Now, the key night amongst you will notice that we also have lows here and ultimately this one here, which we swept. Now, I don't know, I'm not sure many people do, uh, which of these is going to be taken out, right? Let me just close down my weekly on here a second so it's clearer. But what we do know is that price from here is getting drawn down lower. Now, what that does is that gives us the opportunity to get involved with just shy of 4% worth of price action, which is fine for kind of an intraday play or certainly for a short-term swing trade. So what I'm kind of trying to get across here is that by looking at our technicals, we don't know how ultimately how deep this correction was going to go. And we don't know right now how deep that it's going to go. But what we can do is we can play it level by level and we can give ourselves some ideas and some areas to target that allow us to build a plan or a strategy that we can then execute. And at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is we're always looking to strip away the noise and we're looking to find the narrative of what it is that we can get involved. Mm. Couldn't agree with you more, Peter Dale. Yeah, scammers are lower than a snake's belly. And that, <laughs> that's a very cool saying. I like that. Um, so as we are at the moment, we've inverted this fair value gap. Not a problem. I would still expect this area to act as some kind of resistance as we come back up. The next thing that um, is of interest to me is, is this, right? So when we're bullish, right, we're looking for uh, down close candles, right? So you see these down close candles here to become support for price, all right? Now, um, whether you're somebody, I would always recommend going to the source to study from someone like, um, uh, somebody like uh, ICT, for example, um, who I learned a lot from in the past, Trader SC, who I can't recommend highly enough, people like CryptoBird, for example. But there's different interpretations of order blocks. What I'm looking for is consecutive or single candles, in this case, down-closed candles. So for me, I would be looking at these two down-closed candles here as an order block, which would be in blue. OK, but what I'm really interested in is how price reacts when we close above or below them. So with that in mind, our down close candles become bullish order blocks, meaning that our up close candles become bearish order blocks. Now, I personally make an allowance for the body. So here, what I've got is the body of an up close candle. When price closes through this, it gives me extra confluence by showing a change in state of delivery, meaning that there would be an expectation that the down close candle here should support price higher. When we set this up close candle, yeah, this gets confirmed as a bearish order block when we close below it here. So when we start to process that information, we've had price close below here, changing the state of delivery, right? Then we're saying to ourselves, right, where's the next liquidity target? We've got it marked out on our charts already here. We know we also have lower ones here and here, right? We've inverted this, what should be a bullish fair value gap, meaning it's now bearish. We can see how we get to here to Saturday. There's an expectation that price is reaching lower. Okay. So now 
when we move to a lower time frame, in this case, the four hour, right, then the premise was quite simply once sweeping out all of this liquidity on the downside, we're looking for exactly the same premise. OK, we've now had this drop. We're now looking for the recent leg, which is this, this high to this low, which is why we've set this Fibonacci. OK, which, again, I'll just do in a premium discovery so it stands out a bit more. Now, what this means is that this fair value gap is why we were targeting long setups, right? Not because we expect this to be a full bullish market recovery. We just simply don't know, all right? But what we're looking for here is this fair value gap here is up in premium, meaning that we would favor short setups, meaning that one of two things is going to happen here. This is how I look at it. Price closes above on a four-hour scale here inverting this fair value gap as we did with this one here except this becomes support in which case we would then look for price to make its way to the daily fair value gap we look for it to show strength here and for it to then continue to liquidity targets higher in the shape of these equal highs up here let me just draw that across so that's one scenario price violates this fair value gap we sustain more bullish momentum the news realigns itself and the market can continue up failing that what i'm now looking for in here is rejection because as we can see here what happened price had an initial drop came back to 50 percent, tested this order block right fine then what happened price resumed its bearish nature came back up then what did it do came up and tested this order block right? So now price has dropped again. My expectation is for price to kind of work out what it's going to do within here. So we need to be prepared to trade this both ways, okay? We still have liquidity targets lower down, yeah, in the shape of this low. Abnormal wick where we saw a huge V-shaped recovery. Have to expect there to be a lot of liquidity down there. The price can be pushed towards that. Market makers also, you know, want to make an efficient market. So let me just do this in red so it stands out. and move this back to our less obtrusive range. So hopefully it kind of makes sense how we're looking at how price is kind of moving. So price is constantly in a flux seeking liquidity, all right? So when we take out lows, as we took out the lows here, we expect price to travel back, yeah, and find an area. Oh, I'll do that again. And for price to find an area where it can then continue lower or invalidate that and move higher. So for example, Again, using this as our premium discount, it's just a, just a range that split a Fibonacci that split 50-50. We had price drop. Our indication was also that, okay, so this is a shift because they're, they're now setting lower lows. We also inverted this bullish fair value gap, right? Meaning that when price closed below, there's then an expectation that price is seeking liquidity lower, all right, which it was below these lows. Now, just overlaying that same principle here, yeah, we can see, and again, price doesn't always play by the exact rules, okay? We can see here, for example, on this displacement leg down, my expectation was for price to reach up to this fair value gap here, which it did, right? But not quite into the top 50%. Still allowed us to hunt down some short setups there, which obviously we play with confirmation. So now we're undergoing the same thing here. Price has come down, it's purged out some lows. I would say it's purged out some key lows here as well, some high time frame lows. So the expectation, as we said last night, and you can always go and check this, guys, as well. I always, We always validate everything we talk about on the channel. You can see our p &L, You can see the trades we make. Everything's in the public domain. The expectation is for price to sweep liquidity here, come back to here, and think of this more as a decision-making point, all right? Um, Bitcoin, XBTC, yeah, going down to 65K again as we speak. Yeah, kind of. At the moment, we don't really have that confirmation. One thing on a four-hour... Um, that's holding kind of a bullish structure at the moment is that we had a change in state of delivery here. We've set this bullish order block now, meaning that price and really when you look at these, the way to look at that is when this is set and when that candle closes, the expectation is for price to draw lower and attack at least this high. Now, yes, we are here, so it's indecisive, but the key thing with me, for me, sorry, is that we've already had this run up. This isn't really the time to be getting bullish, yeah? Yeah. Time to be getting bullish is in and around when we've swept liquidity and we have a key draw on liquidity. So liquidity is taken here. Where does it find it next? This gap or this high? Yeah. 
So as price moves up, we close above this, invalidating this as a, uh, a, a as a bearish point that price could reverse. Then we can look for higher prices. Okay, but ultimately, as it stands, you know, price is dropping, market structure is bearish, and I think we're looking for that in here. And that's not at all to um, discredit your point there, Bitcoin XBCC. That you've got, a, you know, you've got a good read on the market. Then price is coming back down from a key point, and 65k is without doubt going to be a level that people are interested in. And we can see that it offered support here as well. It was a key pivot for this area when we swept it, took liquidity, and then ultimately left a price higher. So I think you've definitely got some good insights there. For me, I, I like to kind of look for a little bit more confirmation, and I think what that would be in the form of, and we're starting to get it now. Except I'm outside of my trading sessions. So I'm somebody that that likes to utilize kill zones, okay, which are these areas here, which are aligned with the New York AM session, New York PM session, and also London. So for the minute, when we had this pump, and let me show you my thought process here. So price overnight during Asia came up and, and took liquidity here, yeah? So a good way that you can look to get involved if you're not sure, if you're not certain if price is going to pump higher, yeah, then look at the market structure and also look at where price is delivering from so what we could see here heading into london is that we had a sweep of these lows and then we created this bearish fair value gap here meaning that again with expectation of how price is moving so price moves down corrects higher before it moves down lower there would be an expectation for that fair value gap to provide resistance when price closes above as it did with this candle here, we expect price to seek liquidity higher, okay? Now we've broken structure. This is on a 15 minute, by the way, guys. We can see how this 15 minute fair value gap has been supporting price, all right? Found support there, sent price higher. Now what we're starting to see on a 15 minute scale, which is the lowest time frame that I have that I'm looking to kind of plot market structure um, and also kind of get my, um, get my eye in in terms of the higher time or the the bias that i'm looking to trade is that we've now inverted this right so what that means for me is we've seen a sweep of a higher we've slightly overextended this move we've had a large move up we've now inverted this which again if we were to expect this to act as support we would then expect higher prices from here we've closed below it meaning that we're then seeking liquidity lower in the first page from this low I would also really have an expectation now that we've swept this low here, okay, for price to kind of make its way a bit lower here too. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm ultimately flipping bearish, but I think if we align the high time frame bias and say we're delivering from a high time frame a four hour bearish fair value gap, yeah, then price correcting lower makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it doesn't have to listen to me, it doesn't have to listen to anyone. The fact is it's taken liquidity here. But what I would say is, this gives us a really key indication. For me, I would want to see price come down and close below this. Then I'd be looking for a retest and for price to trade lower. It would then fall in line with our higher time frame bias on the four hour that price is looking to reject here. Now, if price gets back above this, yeah, and on the lower time frame, then regains market structure, right? Then we could very well be looking for higher prices here, and we could get, you know, price come up close on a four hour basis above this in which case then we can look to target the next liquidity which are the next highs all right at the moment we've got this kind of early stage move happening in here but it's probably a little bit aggressive to be getting involved in this stage but it certainly doesn't tell me that i would want to be long so what does it tell me and how could i action this all right well this fair value gap that's emerged here right this is our 15 minute gap now, if we apply the same principles and we look at this expansion from low to higher, then should price come back down here, take out this low, right? So we've had the sweep. We would then just want to see price recover structure and we can look to take these for higher prices, all right? I would be looking for these as confirmation setups on lower time frames, meaning that, meaning that I would want to see market structure breaks or I would want to see fair value gap inversions, bits and pieces like that, for example, to trigger them. Uh, however, this just makes sense for me. Right now, I could look to blindly short this, but the truth is that, you know, when we look at it, we've had a fairly bullish reaction here 
On the one hour, we've regained beautiful market structure here in a bullish nature, but we do need to see a four hour close above this before we look to move any higher. Um, so let me just catch up on some of the comments. Tim the Chin, hello mate, always good to see you on here. Oi, oi. Is it true that grayscale causes downside? Uh, no, I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know, I doubt very much we will ever really know the ins and outs of the truth, there'll be a lot of speculation. Uh, obviously, I do believe that geopolitical situations, the escalation in tensions between Iran and Israel, um, I think is a big is a big factor. Um, I think the fact that that kind of settled over the weekend, we haven't. Excuse me, let me just show you quickly. We haven't seen that uh, transition into equity markets, right? So, look, we had this on Friday, and now the markets really do want to kind of tell you something here. You see a huge drop like this, right? But look, when we saw this massive drop here as well, price recovers once again, same kind of principles that we're looking at here when we take the drop to the higher. Yeah, what happens here? Price recovers up into this area, favoring short positions. Below this, in this 50% favors the longs, above it favors the shorts. So if we're looking at this now, really we're kind of still within this range, all right? Now, yes, Friday had a really, really big sell-off. In my opinion, <clears throat> if the news was going to be a major catalyst, a huge black swan event, yeah, which for those of you that don't know what it means, it means it's really kind of an unpredictable event whereby, you know, <clears throat> it's something that you can't really foresee, right? It's the sad truth of war, situations like that, natural disasters, for example, things that nobody wants to see but are a sad fact of life. So... This kind of preempted that, which I always find a little bit suspicious. We were, you know, we've broken trend here and we're moving up. But actually, something I want to show you on this, guys, is that once you remove the noise, yeah, then we apply the same principles, okay? So just using our 50% range, from here to here is our range of expansion, right? So we're just going to draw that in. Now, when price took out this higher, the expectation is for price to draw down into a fair value gap. So say, for example, you expected it to be this one. And I'll do it in green to show that it's one that we'd look to buy from. When we close below it, yeah, chances are that's telling you that price wants to correct a little bit lower. So then what you can do is you can start to look for your other gaps, yeah, your key swing lows, for example, and lows or highs that you see within fair value gaps. ICT would call them an intermediate term low or an intermediate term higher. And the easiest way to think about this is just that they're a high or low formed within a fair value gap which basically end up giving you dual points of confluence, yeah? So when we swept this low, we're now down encouraging buyer orders, right? Even if it's just to push price back up here, yeah, this is what's known as a balanced price range as well, meaning that we have a fair value gap closed through with another fair value gap, invalidating it and making it a key point of resistance. Now, if we combine the fact that we have this bearish gap here as well, which I'll just do in red, I overhang it here so you guys can see it. Oh, actually, it doesn't need to. Then for me, it, it becomes quite simple, right? When we were in this move and we were going up and we thought, okay, well, we've taken this high, price is going to correct from here and bounce, and it didn't. When we closed below, we knew that we were seeking out liquidity targets lower. We closed below this one, we swept this one. Now, when you sweep a level, you want to watch the reaction, yeah? So when we got down to here, quite simply, we're saying, okay, well, we've now swept a key low. If we're not reaching for this low, then the chances are price is going to correct at least to here. Yeah, we've got this order block. We've got this inverted fair value gap, which is also a balanced price range, and this bearish FVG. So from here, price can react and go lower, or price can close above this, use it as support, invalidate this, and then start to climb and build higher. So we just always want to be prepared to trade this both ways and always do the same. With a, with a good approach to risk and reward, all right? Meaning that while I'm down here, is this a good place to short? So first of all, I wanna look at the reaction against the low. We can see the price swept this low and quickly closed back above it with this candle, a bullish engulfing candle, right? Now, again, when we swept this high, yeah, let me just do this so you can see it clearly. Why haven't price closed above, but we really struggled to get any momentum. We didn't see any big bullish candles here, right? We came up, had these long downside wicks, price ranged within the kind of the range of these candles here. When we closed and came back below, it's like trading a range. And my good friend Trader Dank tells a brilliant story, which I'm sure you're probably bored of her hearing me talk about now, but I won't tell it because it's his story about Johnny and the pizza. But basically, it's a brilliant story about 
when price leaves a range, if that's the strength it needs to really break out and this isn't a deviation, then price has no reason to get back in that range. If it does, you should be suspicious and you should kind of treat it as weakness here. If you're wrong and price climbs back out, you take your loss and then you accept the fact that it's shown extra strength, which gives you more conviction to then trade that long. Um, just going to run through a couple of questions quickly before I rattle on, guys. Stevie Boy, on my BTC chart, are uh, using two-week time frame and marks out a mother bar, an inside bar for me. We are still in that range. Okay, super interesting. Um, let's do this very quickly. Just for anybody that's maybe got any questions about uh, ranges, it can maybe help sh uh, put a little bit of light on there. So let's just do this as, what's today's day? 15th, I'll be today, I think. Just going to hide this for a second and just show you what Steve is talking about here. Throw these up in the group as well. Perfect. Right. So what Steve's talking about here, now I am not someone that really uses kind of ranges on this size, but absolutely each to their own. And something I'm a really key kind of advocate of are inside bar ranges. So what we have here is an inside bar pattern. So let me show you what that is. So that's the inside bar low, inside bar high, low, high. Right, now this gets a little bit confusing in terms of naming it because actually the pattern is known as the inside bar. And what it is, it's a large candle like this one when the secondary candle closes within its range, meaning it can't sweep its lower, it's higher. This then becomes the inside bar candle showing that we've had an inside day, or in this case, an inside fortnight, meaning the price has failed to take liquidity above or below the previous. Now you can do this on a daily, a weekly, etc. okay? Now, the key thing here is what you wanna do is you wanna be looking for reactions when price takes that out. So with that low there, what you'd be looking for is if price then steps back in, you'd then be looking for it to trade to the opposite side of the range. However, if price kind of sets this low here, all right, doesn't take it out like that and actually comes back below here and then uses this area as resistance, then you're looking for liquidity targets lower down, okay? So in this instance, what Steve's saying is within this range, he's then looking for how price kind of reacts within there. So I'm just looking to see if on a two week scale, we can see the last point. I think actually, oh, well, sorry, Steve, because this is you, you're talking about it on Bitcoin, aren't you? I'm doing this on uh, NQ. But the same principle applies, right? If we were looking at it on a daily basis, then we're kind of within the range of this one still as well, I believe. So we have this would be the mother bar. And then this is the inside bar, right? We also have the inside bar from that candle's low there, which is pretty close aligned with, oh no, actually not an inside bar because it's taken it. So let me delete that and show you another quick example. We've had one that's formed here. I'm just trying to find one whereby I can give you guys an example of how they kind of play out they're a particularly interesting pattern. Here we go. Okay, so even just focusing on the mother bar here, what do we see? Mother bar inside bar sets the pattern. Here, price comes up and deviates, right? But you never hear anyone say this better than SC. I always think of it as everybody does. Deviation, price steps back in the range. Where is it shooting for? The low of the range. What happens here? Price deviates the range again comes back in, where do we shoot for? The high of the range. Now, price deviates here, climbs back within the range, yeah? Fails to get to the midline. When it climbs back out of the range here, it's done what? It's shown strength, 50% of that upper range, found it to the T, climbed back out, no reason for this to see, be seen as weakness. From here, we would then target the liquidity higher up. If anybody's interested in inside bar ranges, I won't go on about them anymore. I think it's a great point brought up by Steve, but I do have something tagged at the top of my Twitter that runs through how I certainly use inside bar ranges. It's all free. You can go and take a look at that. You can also go on the website, theburbnest.com, B-I-R-B, and there's loads of free cool infographics on there for you as well. But good spot there, Stevie boy. Um, especially after prices had a big rip or a big dump, Typically, price consolidates. So finding these ranges can be really, really key for playing your kind of mean reversion setups. 
Nit, so Steve, the 56K target, I believe we revisit lower, like 62 to 58. Yeah, we'll certainly let's take a look at that and kind of put those thoughts into practice. Nit, hello, mate. There's talks of Asian ETF coming into play too during this volatile period. Yeah, I believe I read something this morning that um, that I think they've approved a Bitcoin ETF over there, right? So again, look, it's very, very difficult to talk about these things when we're looking at you know, people suffering in the real world. I don't deal with it particularly well. I don't think in terms of, um, you know, it's something I don't like to see. I, I'm a pretty, you know, a pretty peaceful guy. I love my boxing. I love my martial arts, stuff like that, right? But the whole point of that in my eyes is to teach people discipline. So it's hard when you see people suffering for other people's agendas. But I am somebody that believes massively in market manipulation. I'm not saying the Iran-Israel situation is that, but I am saying that you do often see these huge flushes brought up very aggressively, by um by people and by institutions right if it's value if it's not then ultimately you know we find out very soon however we can use our ta right to inform us of this and this is kind of what we've been running through here so what we can see here is as we discussed above price has closed below this violating this price is now seeking liquidity lower so we came down and we took out the liquidity here, right? Bearing in mind that this happened at 12.15. So now we're saying to ourselves, just quickly, for anybody that's interested, how you might be able to kind of get involved in this. Now, I think the problem is we're on maybe too low a time frame here. Um, we would need to probably drop down for that. But when you put it on the lower time frame, you can really see, right? Obviously, it's a little bit gappy at the moment because I'm on the spot chart and not on the futures. Well, you can see how price closes below, seeks out liquidity here. Then ultimately, what does it do? It then corrects higher. You see this group of inefficiencies here. That one bearish one here ultimately rejects price a little bit lower. Now we've taken that liquidity. We're either looking for life to run, price sorry, to run down deeper to where this is, or we're looking for the inefficiency that's been made here to hold, right? Price to draw back to this and ultimately come down there. And that way, what it allows us to do is overlay these principles to be able to intraday trade these. And you can trade them on other time frames as well, guys. It doesn't have to be um, on super low time frames because price is fractal. So I can show you, for example, how we would look at this on like a weekly chart and then decant that down, you know, to sort of a, 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 a four hour and then down to a 15 minute as well, if people are interested in that. But my current thought on Bitcoin is that we are expecting a higher time frame rejection here. This on the 15 minute, I think, will give us a good idea. If price comes down into this lower 50% fine support here and continues to push up, then I think we could violate this on a four hour scale. And again, we'd want to see a close above before considering any long setups. While we're in here, uh, for me, it's shorts only at the moment on an intraday basis. Thank you very much, Erica. You're a legend. And there we go. Great advice here from Telvin. Yeah, Hong Kong have approved a number of ETFs earlier today. Exactly right. So we're just waiting to get some confirmation on the rollouts and bits and pieces, but that's really, really positive news for the space. It also feels like a positive injection after we've recently had a big flush. Some of the other stuff you need to look at is that leverage was highly exposed, right? We had a lot of over leveraged traders. Look at the funding rates on certain exchanges now. They've actually dropped negative, meaning they're encouraging people to, to, to go long. That doesn't mean that you should just run in and start going long, by the way, but it does mean that certain factors are starting to line up to the fact that we could be seeing a little bit of a recovery here full exposure myself personally over the weekend i took the opportunity to buy some more projects that i'm really really keen on um these are projects that i don't you know i have no involvement or partnership awareness with apart from Cresso cree um who we are partnered with over at the nest we're a strategic partner of theirs but they're a fantastic wallet great team stats up on there i added more blender aix for example which have done well on the bounce but at the same time I'm very happy to add those and continue adding those to my portfolio as I move forward. And that's under my risk management. But the majority of my trading is done on an intraday basis. All right. So that's how I see the charts. Um, just looking through a couple more of your questions. Yeah, thank you for that, Telvin. Absolutely. Yeah, Hong Kong have approved a number of ETFs earlier today. Just waiting for further confirmation to come out of that. Um, yeah, a lot of retests and choppy action. With those wicks, do you change your stop loss approach? Yeah, so in terms of a stop loss, um, one thing that you can do, guys, if you are kind of struggling with that and I think what um, what we are talking about here and what Craig's kind of alluding to here is if you have like these really big downside wicks, like let, let's use this one, for example, yeah, and you were looking to trade uh, this, all right? So you've had a expansion here you've taken out that local high 
you're now saying to yourself, okay, if you get back to a point at 50%, yeah, that you can look to go in. We have this order block here as well. We have this larger order block made up of these. This is just an example as well, guys, right? So you can. So your theory is that we flushed out a load of liquidity here. Price is going to move up. You want to be a buyer in and around here. So maybe you put your buy orders just here at 50% of the retracement. But you don't want to put your stop loss all the way down here on the low. Now, sometimes you just have to suck it up and you have to say, right, well, where's the near most clear and obvious low is this one. There's a little micro one here. Yeah. But we're going to focus on this one because what I would do is in a situation, you see where we have these order blocks here, they're these down closed candles before this big propulsion on price. What I would look to do is I would look to take these order blocks and where you have this smaller candle, that's within the realm of this larger candle here, right? So I would look for the body of these. If we've set this order block, meaning we have a down closed candle that's now been closed above with a bullish candle in this case, then I'm often happy to adjust my stop loss to the bottom of that order block body. Because what I'm saying is, look, if price really starts to create, if this order block doesn't support price, if the buyers aren't here, chances are my theory's wrong. If we close below that, it allows me to flip my bias. I would then, especially in conditions like this, just be targeting quite humble targets. We got that at 2.21. However, without that, if we had to have our stop below here, we're one for one. Yeah, so we're getting double the risk to reward. However, don't just do that blindly because you see it. Just make sure that you understand the premise behind it, that I'm basing that on my theory that the order block here is set when price closes above it. Yeah, so from there, I don't expect price to move lower. If price had come down, violated this and closed below, I'd simply be looking for a pullback into here to then come down and attack liquidity resting below these lows, right? Um, but ultimately, we wouldn't have got it at that point. We would have kind of got that bounce. But if you're thinking about that, then that's one way that I would certainly look to adjust my uh, stop loss there. Tammy, good day. How are you, my friend? <laughs> yeah, I am on the wrong chart, Steve. You're right. So I, I was, comments were too far up, but hopefully the premise was still correct. And actually, funny enough, it's still on the it's still on the BT, uh, still the same on the Nasdaq chart, right? Two P G G, how are you doing? Sorry, Simon. M Q M is the Nasdaq. Uh, it's the forward-facing contract through till June is what we would trade. Um, it's what we trade uh, on futures markets. Awesomistic, brilliant name. Hello, mate. Great to have you on here. Eric is right. It is NASDAQ as well. Joshua Walker, hello, mate. Great to have you on here as well. Simon, yeah, love my boxing. Love my boxing. Uh, mixed martial arts as well. Really kind of been getting back into that recently, which has been awesome and really looking to pump it up even more. We're going to start kind of getting back to, you know, two to four training sessions a week. Um, for me, just really, really brilliant discipline, great, great fitness, and great stress reliever as well. <laughs> All right. So, guys, let's hand this over to you, right? I'm, and just to show you very quickly, just just some kind of – it's quite nice. We don't often get to do this on a Monday show, but just showing some real-time applications of price action and how it kind of moves from liquidity, right? So – we close below is violating this. You want to look for these big, clear and obvious fair value gaps here. And then we don't have any FEGs down here. We just have liquidities at the low. So when we close down here, that's what allows us to get in and obviously trade this lower. Now, you would need to be doing this on a much lower time frame chart, like a one minute or a 30 second for a move of that size. Um, and again, you need to be taking into consideration how much percentage you had to work. You've got a 0.40%, probably just enough for a very small scout, but you would need a clear invalidation up there. Burn. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, let me just uh, leave I triple seven. How do you see the next months? Okay, well, I think that's a really good question. So let's do this. Let's just get all of this into a group. What's the day today? 15th, isn't it? I keep saying that. Brain isn't fully in gear, is it? 15th or the 4th? So let's hide this. And let's say to ourselves, okay, let's zoom right out here. And yeah, Bird, remind me if I forget or slip over this, mate. I'll absolutely have a look at USDCHF. 
Um, for a lot of you here as well, I imagine that some of you or a lot of you are, are interested in kind of, you know, trading, price action trading, stuff like that, because you've, you've about three and a half thousand people watching this at the moment. Um, and I've been rattling on for quite a while. So if you're not, then hopefully it's been useful for you anyway. But if you are, I think people need to really realize this stuff like this. You know, you don't have to just trade cryptocurrency. And that's why I think it'll be good to kind of end by looking at um, USDCHF. You've got lots of really good funded accounts now. You've got lots of good prop desks. We run our own one at TBN, for example, that's completely free. We call it the inverse prop desk because you don't have to pay for your evaluations. With that, you can come on board, pass an evaluation account, and you can trade with other people's money. Other investors put pools of money there that they're happy for good traders to trade with. And you keep the lion's share of the profit. With our inverse prop desk, you also get a share of the actual prop desk itself and the other successful traders, which is something we're trying to do to help develop the next kind of generation um, of multifaceted traders, people that can trade cryptocurrency, Forex, equities, etc. Me, for example, I trade equities, I trade Forex, sometimes legacy markets, but rarely, and also crypto. So I'll show you how these same principles apply. But now just zooming out for me on a weekly scale, let's just look at where we are, all right? Because it's very, very easy to overreact sometimes. Now, this is what's capping price, right? This high, 69K, um, the previous all-time high. I've been very vocal about this when we failed to close above it here, got this long downside wick here and this rejection here. It's a little bit more positive about this candle because it was a pin bar or like a bullish hammer candle with a very short nose. If you see those with the small body at the top and a long tail, that's a pin bar. You also see them in bearish fashion, long tail to the downside small body. And look how that led to price driving lower. They're typically more effective when you're trading with the trend. Yeah, so just to give you a couple of very quick examples pin bar candle here what happened led to a lot of upside pin bar candle here led to a lot of upside pin bar candles in here more upside this pin bar candle here led to a lot of upside pin bar candle here oh that was terribly drawn pin bar candle here right and then we had another one here ultimately this one hasn't worked yet um and we had this one here but we are coming in to a really really key area of resistance okay so the key thing is that this is a rejection here and at the moment I hear, always hear SC, as I said, rattling around in my head in a good way. Is this a deviation? If we've now shown weakness, we've stepped back in the range. Where should we be targeting? Well, for me, on a weekly scale, this is obvious. But we've also swept this liquidity, right? So let me clear this up and show you my thought process. So I'm just going to apply exactly the same principles I just discussed with you previously, right? I'm looking for this expansion leg here, right? Price consolidated here, and then we had this expansion. So I'm looking at this. From this low to this high, and I'm saying to myself, well, where's a likely target for price? If price is super strong, yeah, then we could sweep this low as we did here because that's liquidity and we could pump from here. Now, my issue with this is I need some kind of, I need an extra trigger mechanism here, right? And what I'd be looking for is for this, all right? So we have these, we have our down closed candles here. Now, currently what we've done is we've taken this up close candle, closed below it here, meaning that our change in state of delivery is favoring bearish price action. However, we've taken the nearest liquidity and we're still bullish. Yeah, on a weekly scale, higher highs, higher lows. This is merely a correction and not even a particularly big one at the moment on this scale. Now, if we want, if we're looking for a deeper correction, then basically I'm looking at this fair value gap here. All right, and especially the section of it that's below this 50%. So what I'd really like to see is price to come down into this area here, recover market structure, and then I would be really, really bullish that we were getting ready to take on um, new all-time highs. Until that happens, for me, there's two clear draws on liquidity here. One is this, and one is this, yeah? So on a weekly scale, it's still super healthy for price to come all the way down to here, right? And then correct. On a weekly scale, in fact, we would need to see, yeah, so prices come up to a higher, higher low, yeah? We need to see a lower high and then a break of this low before we actually stepped into bearish structure, okay? So hopefully price either recovers from here, gives us a change in state of delivery, shows us a lot of strength, and then we can look to pump or price does correct, but finds good support in here, yeah, and then recovers market structure and looks to move higher. Now, as we look left, what can teach us from history what happened? And actually, this for me was really quite similar, right? Look how we had this candle come in, wick above, 
came back below. Then it had another couple of attempts to get back above. This failed to take this high, which is actually maybe a little bit of a sign of weakness, but we don't know yet. The difference is that when we had this big close below, yeah, let's look and draw it exactly the same. This was our move higher. So this is the same range, that low to that high. This was the pump. This was the low that swept the high. This was the low that swept that high. So comparing the two, what we can see is when price broke down and we got our change in state of delivery, yeah, as we did here, price then continued lower to the next fair value gap, which was this. All right, so you can see how the kind of similarities are looking to pan out. Now, also in its drop, price took out this low. The difference is we had a fair value gap here. So this was an even more significant low, an intermediate term low, meaning that when price closed below it here, the expectation was that price was going to pump deeper. However, again, we were only dropping into a bullish fair value gap here. So I was fully expecting price to find support here and continue higher, right? Now, when it didn't, when price closed below, which it did here, Remember what we said before, this then turns into an inversion fair value gap, something that should offer support and ultimately offers resistance. And then within here, remember, we look left. Where's our nearest point of liquidity? Was this low? Yeah, so we can see how just by reading the dynamics, what the market is giving us in terms of the price action, it can kind of affect targeting as well. Now, now we're here. And just to compare those two again, we would need this to be closed below for me, for me to really think that we're in for a deeper correction here. And we still need to be careful because we still have gaps here and here. Ultimately, though, I do think that if buyers are going to step in and show conviction, they don't show it now. If they do show it now after this sweep, then I think it's really strong conviction. And I think we could really, really look to be ripping here. And this was maybe a move to just flush everybody out. Well, <laughs> good timing there, Andrew. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just saying, right? So, you know, I think a deeper flush from here is possible into this area, but if price shows strength here and starts to recover, then ultimately I think it's really, really bullish and I think it could push up quite aggressively. So that's kind of where I'm looking on the higher time frame things on there, guys. I'm just going to finish off. I know maybe not of interest for some of you, but I really would um, I really would recommend you kind of just staying around for this bit if you have got the time so that we can take a look at USDCHF, right? Now, this is obviously a 4X pair. Let me just, again, we can see the same principles here, guys, right? Look, key liquidity levels marked, price flushes liquidity, recovers. Um, and that, in fact, let me just. Do this from a clean chart, right? So we're here on a weekly. Remember, the theory is the price is either looking for old highs or old lows or fair value gaps to find liquidity for continuation, or we look for violations of fair value gaps, in which case we then think the price is reaching elsewhere. So let's just follow this down, show me. What do we do? We swept highs here, big displacement. What was our clue here? Well, first of all, we shifted structure. We took out this low, all right, meaning we had a market structure shift. We also inverted this gap, right? Now, something else that you'll learn from different sources, again, mine heavily based around ICT concepts. It's fortunate to be part of his original mentorship as well as a lot of things I've learned from SC. They both very much aligned on this, which is sometimes if you're uncertain, you can look for areas of mitigation, right? Meaning that in here, right, we can see these down close candles that become bullish order blocks, yeah? So let's just use this one for example. That becomes a bullish order block when we close above it here. We then expect price, if it's going to continue higher, to hit this and move higher. Now, it didn't. It violated it, right? Now, the more important thing for me here is the violation of this bullish gap, right? Because that was a bullish gap. We expected the order block and the bullish gap to support price and for it to move higher. We violate both aggressively, right? And then what we're going to do is a little is something I really like doing, right? And I think SZ was probably the first person that taught me this, which is looking for prior areas of consolidation, yeah? And then looking for weakness on the opposite side. So these areas here are showing strength, right? There's no question about that. This consolidation here, almost as a whole, yeah? This consolidation here, when price breaks out of it, should be looking to support price and move higher, yeah? So case in point, uh, 
this area of consolidation here holds leads to price moving higher even when price dips back into it it still moves higher right this area of consolidation here holds price moves higher yeah this area of consolidation here holds price moves so you can see this stepped approach where the down close candles are supporting price higher and higher it works the same obviously with up close candles in the other direction when we're going lower which i'll show you now we look at this area we look at this when that's closed below that becomes an inversion we've shifted structure right meaning the market structure is now bearish okay so now we're saying, okay, well, what confluence do we have? And we definitely look at, yes, yeah, a good point. We'll take a look at the dollar in a moment as well. Andrew, you're right, it is sneaking a little bit higher. Um, now what I'm looking for, I'm saying, well, if this area should add should act as support, what do I want to look for within that? Well, if we've now violated this, I then want to look for gaps, yeah, or order blocks within this area, like with this one, that are now bearish. So we've got a bearish gap opened in an area that used to be support. Think about this, right? You've got all of these buyers in here, yeah? People are just buying, 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 buying like crazy, all right? When price dips back down into here, if the buyers are still here, they should still be buying and price should move up. If that doesn't happen, all of a sudden, everybody that's buying in here, yeah, is going to look to cover their position or possibly move the other way or shut their position when they don't get that. You take out this higher, fail to displace above it, price has a big sell-off, induces a bit of panic in the market, people start to sell, and ultimately it reverses the trend, right? Now, this area here that should have offered that support is now showing us weakness. So what can we do? We can look for when price tests these areas and use them to fuel our short setups, all right? Now, in the same way, if you look at a consolidation like we had in here, no question that this is a key area of consolidation. Right? That area there before price popped, when it came back down, look, it found support here, got back up. Look what happened when it gets below it. Gets below it, tests it, flips to resistance. All right? So now what we want to see in reverse is all that we've just been talking about, right? We want to see key areas of strength turn to, um, turn to weakness and weakness to strength. So where are we? Price has currently swept out these lows, all right? Now, once again, our old friend, the inversion fair value gap was the first indication that price was looking to move higher, okay? Where to? Well, quite simply, as we did before, we wanna take the leg down, this swept liquidity here. So even though we have this leg from here to here, I'm favoring the leg that swept liquidity on the high and the low because that becomes our dealing range. Let's just have a look at this quickly. Oh. Doorbell going off. So as we go into here, we see we sweep liquidity, we inverse this, price retest this, and then looks to move higher, okay? Now, what we've done in here is quite simply said, well, once we inverse this here, our expectation is for price to go to the next pool of liquidity, which is resting within this FVG. At the point we go and attack this FVG, this is bearish, right? Meaning that as price has come up, when we closed above, we failed to reject here. As we did there, we treat that as an inversion, and then we're saying, well, price is almost certainly heading for the next point of liquidity, which is this high. So now we're here, we've closed above this and we've had a strong close above this. So now the next liquidity target is here. It's a little bit treacherous to long this at the moment, I would say, just because we've had that. All right, we've had a nice expansion higher. So if I was looking at this and saying, okay, well, where would I like to see price holders support? Well, this area here, right? So this was the area that should have been acting as resistance. It wasn't, it flipped to strength. So now we've got this bullish gap within here. This could be a really good place for price to come down, find support, and then really look to move higher. Now, just to flip this down onto a lower time frame, which in this case is the daily, we can see up here and use this to support our theory, okay? We have this bullish fair value gap here on the daily. So we would wanna see that hold, yeah? The other thing that we can look at here is our change in state of delivery, which we had here. Price closed above this, confirming this as a bullish order block. So realistically, price should hold here, yeah? From a point of it being kind of a healthier correction, it would be great to see price come down here and then look for longs to move on. But ultimately, if we were in here right now, and where are we dropping down to? So from a daily, we would then look to move to a one hour chart. If price is gonna hold this, yeah, and show strength, 
then what we want to see is at least this, right? We've had a higher now coming from a higher low. If this is a higher low, if we see a breakout of this, we can look for a retest and then look to trade it higher. That would be the way that I would look for confirmation on this. And the flip reverse of that, I'm just going to get rid of this quickly so it cleans it up. The flip reverse of that is then for weakness, what do I want to see? Well, I would need to see this low disrespected, price to break down from here because then we'd be coming from a lower high, lower low. Then I'd look to retracements into here, into some kind of fair value gap or order block. And then I would target this. Now, doesn't mean that I think this thing's going to reverse into oblivion, but it does mean that as we overlay this, we can see how it would follow our theory that if price is going to cool off and correct here, yeah, as it does, price climbed here, right? So we had this big expansion here, small consolidation, expansion here, consolidation, expansion, consolidation, expansion. Nothing to say we're not going to consolidate a little bit here before making our way up. However, if we close below this and we invert it, I would then expect for liquidity targets on the downside to be chased. All right, guys. Um, just very quickly as well to finish up on a good point that Andrew Bowles has made here, which is about the DXY. Um, and we'll do this on a lower time frame, guys, so we can see it. Look, the more strength that's going into the dollar, the worse the news for risk assets typically. All right. So the dollar's falling today, 10% down, and we can see a nice increase in equity markets, which are risk. Yeah. What we want to do here is really be aware of any um, any particularly aggressive dollar strength, which can then play into the fact that we could be looking for an impact on risk assets um, and cryptocurrency ultimately being a very risky risk asset. All right, guys. Look, I hope you found today useful. Really big shout out to everybody in the stream. We had almost 4,000 people live today. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, Please, if you're interested, please do reach out. You can find loads of interesting information. Keep an eye out as well. We're getting ready and we're prepping a um, we're prepping a halving party promotion. It's going to be a lot of fun. Invite some of our like friends from the industry to the show. Drop loads of alpha. Do loads of deals, bits and pieces like that. But please also don't hesitate to come along and get involved in a free capacity. We do free trials. You can join the public channels, bits and pieces. Get loads of stuff and do check us out on Twitter. Um, keep an eye on the red folder news this week. Obviously, we are in the midst of quite a lot of um, geopolitical turmoil as well. So, you know, nothing but love for everybody or anybody that's caught up in that. Please don't get caught in the trap of thinking that everyday people are to blame for this. These decisions are made well out of the hands of any of us. Unfortunately, we're just left with the aftermath. So please, if you're struggling with anything, do speak to people, do reach out. Um, wishing you all a fantastic weekend. I'm going to be live again on Wednesday with you all. Might even drag Resume back on here to get some of that little legends insights from the point of volume as well as his liquidity levels. Have a fantastic week, guys. Please do trade safe. And I look forward to catching you around the nest.